Good day everyone. This video will cover the model classification topic. Here are the lessons to be covered in this video. Quantitative method. Let us define what quantitative method is. Quantitative method or methods emphasize objective measurements in statistical, mathematical, or numerical analysis of data gathered through polls, questionnaires, and surveys, as well as the manipulating pre-existing statistical data using computational techniques. So what is quantitative research? Quantitative research focuses on gathering numerical data and generalizing it across groups of people or to explain a particular phenomenon. As defined, quantitative method and quantitative research involves the, uh, gathering data through polls, questionnaires, and surveys, and converting it to numerical data and applying measurements, statistical measurements, mathematical and or numerical analysis. Now, these data are important when it comes to choosing what model to use or model building. So what is model building? Model building is the process of deciding which model to use for the context is referred to as model building. Operations research, also known as management science, is simply a scientific approach to decision-making that seeks to best design and operate a system, typically under conditions that necessitates the allocation of scarce resources or scarce resources. We define a system as an organization or, or of independent components that work together to achieve the system's goal. A scientific decision-making approach typically involves the use of one or more mathematical methods. Mathematical model is a mathematical representation of a real-world situation that can be used to make better decisions or to make better understanding that there, about the uh, real-world situation. Many of the uh, key terms used to describe mathematical model should be uh, clarified in the following example. So why do we use models? Now, models are used in various industries because using a real system can be very costly, expensive, and sometimes dangerous, making experiments with real systems difficult. Experimenting with models can save money, time, and effort if they are adequate descriptions of reality or what we call valid. Before we discuss uh, different kinds of models, let us first define some of the important terms used when it comes to modeling. The first is the uh, process yield. A perfect process must produce without defects or rework. You must have appropriate performance metrics to measure process yield in order to expose the unnecessary and costly inefficiencies. Otherwise, the true process yield may be underestimated. Now, process yield measures should be able to expose even the smallest inefficiencies in a process which will enable operations to understand their true process yield to set realistic improvement targets. Many businesses use two different or two types of uh, process yield measures. These are the first time yield and the final yield. 
These businesses frequently discover high yield rates and assume their processes are running efficiently and effectively. Both metrics represent the traditional approach to calculating process yield and do not take into account factors such as rework and relays or delays. So what is the first time yield? Now first time yield or FTY can be obtained by dividing the good products units by the number of total units entered the process at a given process step. The final yield on the other hand can be obtained by counting the good units that made it through until the last step divided by the total number of units that entered the process. The next term is the uh, flow process chart. Now, a flow process chart is a symbolic representation that illustrates the, sequ the sequence of activities within a process. It is, the, uh, it is used to record and analyze the activities that make up a process to determine which add value and which do not. Now, activities can be uh, any operation, uh, inspection, storage, transportation, and delay actions that are carried out by an individual person or a team, a machine, a uh, computer system, or a combination of all. Now, process flow charts can prefer over the uh, other process mapping techniques when the uh, process is sequential in nature and contains few decision points. For this reason, it is sometimes referred to as process sequence chart. A useful feature of this technique is that it can be drawn up as the uh, process is happening thus providing an accurate description of the process. Now, there are three common types of uh, flow process charts based on what is being uh, charted. A band chart type shows the activities of a person or group of people. A material type chart shows what happens to a product or item as it moves and an equipment type chart which shows the activities from the viewpoint of the machine or equipment involved. We now go to the different models. The first one is the conceptual models. Now a conceptual framework can guide research by providing a visual representation of theoretical constructs and variables of interest. Designing a conceptual model begins first by conducting a comprehensive review of the literature. Second, look for peer-reviewed journal articles, books, monographs, conference papers, and other rele uh, relevant sources. Third, arrange the literature according to the topic. And lastly, begin developing theory-based research questions or objectives. The next model is the prescriptive or optimization models. A prescriptive model or prescribe okay, behavior for an organization to best meet its goals. An organization model seeks to find values of, our, of the uh, decision variables that optimize or maximize or minimize, in this case, an objective function among the set of all values for the decision variables that satisfy the given constraints. There are three components of a prescriptive model, and these are objective function, decision variables, and constraints. Now, the uh, objective functions means when an organization have more than one objective, using the objective function can be used if uh, to maximize or minimize a process yield. A decision variable, on the other hand, are variables 
whose values are under our control and influence the performance of the system. Lastly, we have constraints. This means uh, restrictions on the value of uh, decision variables or what we call constraints. The next model is the static and dynamic models. Now, a static model is one in which the decision variable do not involve sequence of decisions over multiple periods. A dynamic model is a model which the decision variables do not involve sequence of decisions or multiple periods. Basically, a static model estimates resource utilization at compilation time, while a dynamic model predicts job performance at runtime. Now, remember that a static model is more structural than uh, the behavioral model, whereas the dynamic model is a representation of the behavior of the system's static components. Static modeling includes class diagrams and object diagrams, which aids in depicting the system's stati uh, static uh, constituents. In contrast, dynamic modeling is made up of a series of operations, state changes, activities, interactions, and memory. Next, we have the PetriNet model. Now, PetriNet model was introduced by C.A. Petri in the early 1960s as a mathematical tool for modeling distributed systems and in particular notions of concurrency, non-determinism, communication, and synchronization. A uh, distributed system is any network structure made up of autonomous computers linked together by a distribution middleware. Now, a middleware is a software that acts as a bridge between an operation or between an operating system or database and application, especially on a network. Now, remember that distributed systems enable the sharing of various resources and capabilities in order to provide users with a single, integrated, coherent network. PetriNets are modeling constructs that can be used in data analysis, simulations, business process modeling, and other scenarios. Now, this type of mathematical constructs can aid in the planning of workflows or the uh, presentation of data on data or or uh, sorry of data on the uh, complex systems. Now, PetriNets describes complex procedures and models, uh, the workings of a system using elements such as uh, places, um, transitions, and also gates. Now, PetriNets have numerous technological applications. One prominent application of PetriNets is in business process analysis. Now, here are some examples of the different kinds of PetriNets model. Let's now go to Finite Automata. Now, Finite Automata, also known as Finite State Machines, are the most fundamental pattern recognition machines. It is a tuple, a five-element abstract machine. It has a set of states and rules for moving between them, but it is dependent on the uh, input symbol. There are different types of uh, finite automata. Or let's first discuss the uh, applications of finite automata. 
So here are the different applications, designing lexical scanners, designing spell checkers, sequential circuit designs, and lastly, we have the design text editors. So here are the different types of uh, finite automata. The first one, we have the acceptors. Now, they are also referred to as detectors or recognizers. They produce binary output indicating whether or not the uh, received input is accepted. Now, if the current state is an accepting state after all inputs is received, the input is accepted. Now, the input is rejected if the current state is not an accepting state. The next is the classifiers. Now, a classifiers are a generalization of acceptors, which generates, generates an array output where n is strictly a larger number than the 2. Next, we have the transducers. Now, trans transducers use actions to generate output based on a given output or state. They are commonly used in control applications and computational linguistics. Lastly, we have sequencers. Okay, sequencers are also referred to as generators. They are a type of acceptor or transducers with a single letter input alphabet. They only produce a single sequence which can be acceptor or transducer output sequence. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.